I found it. Look at this. Look at this card. Do you see that? That's math. That, that's just math. I'm good at math. Well, I'm good at math. I need, I need to make myself this. I need this math magic. I need to go launch Blender. You might remember a time in elementary school learning about multiplication and division and wondering when in your life you would need to consider what whole numbers evenly divide into other whole numbers. Well, math has a way of sneaking into your life when you least expect it. And I think that the new Magic the Gathering card, Zimone All Questioning, from the Duskmorn House of Horror set, is the perfect reason to dive into prime numbers, visualizing prime numbers, and pretending that we're math magicians. Not because math is scary. This may be a horror set, but this video is about how math is beautiful. First off, thank you to Wizards of the Coast for sending me this complimentary product. I'm thrilled to be an MTG ambassador for this set and to spend the next few minutes talking about math and art. So before we dive into our Blender project, let's talk about prime numbers because that's what we're going to be graphing. A prime number is a whole number with only two factors, one and itself. This means that no other whole number will evenly divide into the number. While not actually magical, here in the real world, prime numbers are really interesting. We've evidenced that humans have been thinking about prime numbers since as early as 1550 BC. But you may be wondering, why do we care? Why does it matter if a number is only divisible by one in itself? Really, everything. Science is our toolbox for exploring and discovering the world around us. And we use math as a language of science. Prime numbers are the building blocks of integer numbers, which appear throughout all of mathematics. If you can understand prime numbers, we can understand integers better. Prime numbers also show up in places you might not expect them, kind of like pi. And in those moments, studying prime numbers can lead us to interesting discoveries and results. Like in this moment, I was looking through Duskborn spoilers online and just stumbled into prime numbers. I then dug through the product wizard sent me trying to find this card. A uh, lot of packs later, we did it. We got the card. We were able to find Zimone all questioning. Ah, oh, we got her. Do you see this? Zimone all questioning says, at the beginning of your instep, if a land entered the battlefield under your control this turn and you control a prime number of lands, create Primo the Indivisible, a legendary 00, zero green and blue fractal creature token. Then put that many 1-1 one -one counters on it. And then they have some reminder text to remind us of the prime numbers up to 31. I don't think they were anticipating commander players running more than 36 lands, so they don't need to know that 37 is also prime. First off, how amazing is the flavor of this text? Primo the Indivisible? That's absolutely adorable. We meet the character Zimone in Strixhaven from the Quandrix College. Quandrix mages are math magicians who study patterns, fractals, and symmetries underneath reality to command power over the fundamental forces of nature. So it's maybe unsurprising that Zimone would be harnessing the power of prime numbers. But look at the art on this card. The magic that she has here is actually a visual representation of prime numbers. What we see is a way of visualizing divisors on the number line. Let's use this demo by Jason Davis to explore what we're seeing on the card. For each natural number n, there's a periodic curve drawn starting from the origin, intersecting the x-axis at n and its multiples. The prime numbers are those that have been intersected by only two curves, the prime number itself and one. There's this awesome kind of visualization of what we're shooting for and trying to make them blend there. I'm thinking I want the math magic when I'm kind of spreading it out around me to either start on 12 or 24, just because they have a lot of factors. And so here, if I say like have 24, then everything is divisible by we have these cool math magic arcs that will be coming out of my hands. So we'll have two, three, four, six, and then 12. 24 is good for that same reason, because again, we're not having to plot too many curves, but we'd get two, three, four, six, eight, and 12.
So let me walk you through what we have here. So we're using geometry. So, oh, hi. <laughs> so we're using geometry nodes to make our math magic. Blender uses geometry nodes to modify the geometry of an object with node-based operations. So I leaned really heavily into the math operations available. Each of these is a geometry node, but they're actually node groups. And so we can look inside and see kind of what operations are happening. So here I'm inputting in the divisor, the resolution and the speed. Go inside these a little further. Yeah, this one's not as pretty. Um, my first idea was that I wanted to plot sine functions because this seemed pretty simple. I could just plot a bunch of sine functions and have them intersect uh, to the different divisors, but when you look at the artwork, both on the card and in that demo, they're clearly graphing circles and they're using these half circles and that looks really cool. It makes it look a little bit more astronomical, a little bit more fancy like magic because all the lines intersecting the X axis have the same here. Let me show you. See how they have the same slope? So they look like they're coming in together. And I wouldn't be able to get that with sine functions. What that does mean though, is that we need to do a little math. We essentially have the equation to plot a circle. We have to solve for X and Y. I have a cute little notebook. It's gone. It's gone, don't worry about it. And in Blender, every math operation is its own node. So if we zoom in here, you can see that every node is doing a, a math operation. So we've got subtract, power, subtract. Let's come back to out here. You'll notice that we have two different groups. Some of the curves I want to be very opaque and sparkly. These are the ones that are the most noticeable, but I also am obsessed with these more glittery lines as well. So you can kind of see them as I as I wiggle this back and forth. But basically the more sparkly ones are, they're sparser points. And so they're randomly sprinkled in, not as uniform. And so while they're still following some of the divisors, but the curves of the divisors, they just like appear a little bit more magical, I think. And so zooming in, this is where I hard coded this. Each node has a divisor. And so the sparkly nodes, we've got 13, 7, 5, 17, 19, 13. And then up here, the opaque ones that you see, we're plotting one. That's kind of the small one we see right here. We've got two, three, four, six, and 12. My rationale when I started was I was just going to pick a number and then plot its divisors. And that would be the one in the center when I'm making the magic expand and I picked 12. But then I was like, we need more curves. And so that's when we added all the sparkly curves because we needed more curves. Okay, so there were some tricky parts of this and lots of manic Googling. Um, I think that what, one of the hardest parts about using a program you're not super familiar with is the terminology. And I think it's true for games too. Like when you first start playing Magic, not knowing all the keywords is like, oh no, I don't even know what to look for. And I had this moment a little bit here in this project because I was like, I need a list of numbers or I need to have a grouping. So I'm looking at array list, turns out it was join geometry. And so figuring out that join geometry exists was a game changer. Look over here. They all feed in and they join geometry. <laughs> That was huge, needed that. There's actually another instance of join geometry and that's over here. And this is another little shortcut. And so all of these here join together and we're plotting all of them on this side in the positive axis <laughs> over here. And then instead of plotting them all again, I just flip and rotate this curve over here. And that happens right down here with this join geometry. So if I disconnect it, now it's not disconnecting. No. Oh my gosh. Oh man. I always say math is harder when people are watching, but like you don't expect. It's 
blender harder when people are watching. So when this link is separated, okay, see, link is broken. <gasps> it's gone, but it's okay. We can just reconnect it right here. Boop. Setting up for the shoot. Here's the backdrop. We um, have the lights kind of ready to go. The plan is that I'm going to add my math magic in post. So to make it look realistic, I've got this light here that's set to blue and this box fan that's gonna be blowing at me. So it's like I'm summoning something. And so this is the plan. And then I'll put everything in Premiere and edit like crazy because I don't wanna tell you what day it is based off of when this is coming out, but see if you can make a guess. So can prime numbers actually help us summon fractal creatures to help us win Magic the Gathering games? Kind of. Thank you again, Wizards of the Coast, for sending me all of these awesome cards. Be sure to check out the Dusk Morn Magic the Gathering set. And I have some assets for you to become a math magician in your own photos and videos in the description of this video. Be sure to tag me in your posts so I can see them. If you wanna talk more about math and magic, I have a video where I ran over 1 million simulations to see if poison counters were overpowered. Click the video here on the screen to check it out.